This video is sponsored by PCBoo and they helped me upgrade my Antwig Combat Robot Vector. Last time you saw Vector, he was at the 2024 Robo Games, and he lost. But that's okay. What's the point of losing if you don't learn from it? So I have improved Vector's design, learning from what happened last time, and also having to adapt him to the next event, which does not run a Metal 4. So the magical magnet combo that I discovered last time will not work here. Instead, it's the plywood floor used over at BCRC's Octagon, and ironically, the same arena that Vector actually had his first ever fight in. So before Vector could compete, he needed to be modified in order to run on plywood floors, and that means making him lighter, faster, and stronger taking him from a two-wheel drive configuration back to the four-wheel drive he was originally designed to be. Now with this tournament being run on plywood floors and not metal, I won't be able to run magnets. So essentially I won't have any downforce or anything pressing the wheels down that will give me traction. So I need to figure out a different way to make sure that Vector can actually move it around at the pace he had last time. One of the options that we can do is give Vector cleats. These essentially will be small circular discs with mini razor blades on the end of them, making Vector some type of mini ice climber when going across the floor. However, there's one major problem with this. Wait, I don't believe I'll be able to design cleats that are durable and have blades that are small enough to dig into the wood. I'm not saying no to cleats, I'm just saying that I need to develop and prototype my own until I feel comfortable enough to put them on the bot. And plus, I actually think that they would be rather heavy, so for now at least, they're out. Option two is silicone wheels, but I've come across two major problems with it. One, silicone doesn't necessarily stick to everything, as I found out at RoboGames, and most likely I would have to use nylon in order to ensure that the wheels actually stay together. However, as you've seen in the first video, nylon is not not necessarily the greatest thing to attach directly to something that's, you know, the temperature of the sun, unless it's injection molded. And two, silicone is actually fairly heavy. Each wheel weighs around five to seven grams, and even though that doesn't seem like too much weight, if you add that up three to four times, it gets a bit heavy. Option three is foam wheels. I actually used to run foam wheels on Vector, as you may have seen on the channel. They were incredibly light, they took a considerable beating. Because of the way that they've been constructed, it was incredibly easy to swap out dead wheels. And on top of that, they were actually extremely grippy. I never had any problems with grip when I was using this, so I believe we may have found a winner. Now with the wheel selected, we now have to figure out how to make it four-wheel drive. And as you may remember from my first video, if you haven't seen it, links right up there, Vector used to run pulleys. They had worked for a time, or at least I thought they did, until I found out a fundamental design flaw, that being when they were exposed to any type of heat or friction, they explode. So pulleys are out. And while I was at Rebel Games, I just so happened to see a particular bot. And you'll notice one thing right here. You see that right there? That's a belt. And just like that, I knew instantaneously what I must do. And that is go to my CAD software, design a set of gears that would work with belt, print it, test it once, then go online to a belt calculator and determine how far my belt needs to be for a specific length between gears. Find that pulley, buy six of them instead of just buying one to test it, because obviously my math is 100% spot on. And I won't need to redesign once I actually get the belts because my math is slightly off, and then I have to spend countless hours trying to make a version of the frame and the gears and the belts that don't slip, because that totally did not happen. Anyways, with the main rails of Vector, as you may know, they're made of 7075 aluminum, and they are tough, but not tough enough. And that's not the metal fault it's my fault you see that part right here with literally just air in the middle of the part and no material yeah that's that's where it would fail and even if i had foreseen that vector would end up bending his frame like this nonetheless i still have a bent frame and yes i could in theory just use my blowtorch and heat the metal and rebend it back into place which would be the responsible thing to do so i decided to redesign and make new rails even though they're only 35 grams each were still too heavy and needed to go on a diet in order to do the upgrades that i had planned on doing so i shortened the wheelbase slightly and added some material to that hole I mentioned earlier, and went about trying to trim down the rails so that they only had the bare essentials that they needed. The only way that these would be stronger is if they were made out of 7075 aluminum. The same material I was using last time. But how am I going to get these CNC parts made? My bank account is in the negative and I don't have the money nor the means to make these. That's where our sponsor PCB Way steps in. Do you need a metal part or 3D printed piece? You can't answer me, this is a video, not a Zoom call. But the point is that PCB Way can help you. They provide a variety of services that can help you with almost any project that you need done. Everything from PCB construction, CNC machining, sheet metal cutting, injection molding, restarting the sun itself. Okay, that last part was a lie, but you get the point. PCB Way was actually able to help me get the parts I needed in order to get Vector working, which included the two aluminum main rails and the titanium front wedge that Vector uses against horizontals. And it is intensively easy to use our service. All you have to do is just drop the file you designed, tell them what you need them to do, and boom, the parts end up in your mail. It literally couldn't be easier. And with these new rails acquired, now we're able to put together the new version of Vector. And here's what I did. The main 
same gears that I had to redesign a few thousand times will work with the belt that I had ordered. In fact, I had to redesign the side armor as well in order to accommodate for the new changes. Overall, I believe Vector has actually run 10 to 20 grams lighter than he was before. Now, I know that doesn't seem like a lot of weight, but trust me, leaving extra weight on your bot when it doesn't need to be there makes it feel like you're designing big chungus. And with all that in mind, this is the design I'll be taking to the tournament. As you can see, I've made Vector incredibly light, but that is on purpose. You see, the one thing that I always notice with Vector, he tends to ride up onto two wheels whenever you turn him, and that's due to gyroscopic effect. Now, there's a whole bunch of math and science stuff that goes into that. You can take my word, I am a scientist. Another thing you may have noticed is that the placement of the wheels, they're actually in front of the main weapon as opposed to right behind it. And there's a good reason for this. Every time I would hit a bot, the front wheel would actually act like a fulcrum, and the majority of the hit would actually end up getting sent directly into the frame. Believe it or not, I actually talked briefly to the team over at Riptide when I was over at RoboGames, and they were able to give me some recommendations that would help further my bot. Now, with the wheel in front of the wheel, not only does it negate that, but it also helps with better weight distribution, allowing the rear wheels to actually have more grip than they had before. And because the rear drive motors are connected directly to the rear wheels, using a belt to connect the two, and instantaneously have four wheel drive again. And in fact, due to the reconfiguration, I also had to redesign the side armor. This time, the side armor was actually connected directly to the frame, and also lightened the new front wedge. But besides from that, these are all the changes that have been done to make Vector into his non-magnet mode. And if you want to see him compete in this config, I'll be at the Spartan Bell Slugfest in just a few days. But before I go, I just wanted to say one thing. I am completely shocked by the amount of people that are supporting this channel right now. I didn't even have time to thank everyone in the last two videos because I was so desperately trying to get them finished as fast as I possibly could so that you guys can see them. But as of this audio recording, the channel has six hundred subscribers i i am completely shocked and to, let me put this in perspective this channel did not exist three weeks ago don't know what to do but i do know this i'm gonna keep making videos and that's it but thank you guys and if you want to help support the channel give this a thumbs up or a subscription or a like or a comment or whatever works thank you guys so much for watching and see you in the next video and it will be coming out soon